The more I live, the more I learn. The more I learn, the more I realize, the less I know. One of the biggest challenges in network design has been effectively managing traffic flows end-to-end -end across the network. How can this traffic be classified into different levels of service without adding complication to the management, control plane, or data plane? Now, modern cloud and service provider networks in the SDN era requires even more flexible control on the steering of the traffic flows. As native IPv6 deployment increase, there is a need for a native solution for IPv6 network and IP backbones that provide the same capabilities as current MPLS network. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video we will discuss about segment routing. To move forward, we need to have some sort of simplification and the simplification is introduced by eliminating a lot of protocol stacks by segment routing at the transport layer. The service layer is also simplified with only a BGP based control plane. Segment routing is a technology that elegantly address these varied set of requirements across many different networking domains. The basic philosophy of segment routing is to start with bare minimum distributed route protocols and leverage best out of them. So first we'll see that the difference between LDP and segment routing. So segment routing label distributes using IGP and LDP label distribution are similar in the sense that they are both plug and play. They both are easy to configure Labels are automatically being advertised among the routers when an adjacency peering is formed and there is no label switch paths to manually configured. Additionally, both are stateless and derive automatically for each node. However, the similarity ends here. Fundamentally, LDP relies on IGP, label assignments to the IGP prefixes and the labels are locally significant and they assign values every hops. LDP assigns label approximately every entries to each router prefixes in the routing table. With the default behavior with downstream on demand allocation, there is a reason for this. After a topology change, all routers already have the labels from the new downstream neighbors because everyone assigns advertise labels to everything. So whenever there is a packet traverse happened, a native IP packet when it comes to the ingress router, it will check what is the egress and, and based on that, it will push a label value to it. Based on this label value, when it reaches to the next hop, the next hop will check in the LDP database table and based on this, it will swap with the label and then push to the next hop based on IGP shortest path. Similarly, this will traverse to ingress to the egress. So LDP follows the IGP shortest path. LDP independently LSP control mode can proliferate unnecessary control and data plane state resulting in scaling challenges. In segment routing, the node and the prefix sets are globally unique value assigned throughout the domains. The global unique labels significantly reduce the data plane state at every network hops. Likewise, there is no need of LDP anymore. Labels are advertised in IGP together with the IP prefixes. No LDP to IGP sync is needed, no lib scaling issues, as well as single label per device we will have. Segment routing provides and basically global unique label significantly reduce the data plane state at every network hops. Whenever we traverse from ingress to the egress, the source end will decide and push the labels. There is no state in the intermediate nodes and then the packet will reach to the egress. Segment routing provides topology independent loop free alternate path as its main source of fast reroute. Compared to LDP, no targeted LDP session to be maintained. Unlike LDP provides failure convergence in the ring topology or complicated partial mesh topology. In case of segment routing, nothing so. So fundamentally, LDP relies on IGP and the feature like LDP IGP sync are being used to reduce the black holing. No LDP IGP sync is needed as in segment routing. So no IGP sync is needed for segment routing. Labels are locally significant and assign unique value at every network hop. Global unique labels significantly reduce the data plane state at every network hop. So this is all about LDP versus segment routing. Now we'll see RSVP traffic engineering versus SRT. Traffic engineering and fast reroute are the main reason that the RSVP T is deployed in the network. Improved traffic engineering scalability and flexibility provided by segment routing while addressing some of the SDN requirements that are driving its adoptions. 
So the classic MPLST depends on signaling protocols such as RSVP to establish end-to-end -end tunnels with reserves resources, thereby complicating the control plane. Moreover, it also suffers from the scalability issues due to large overhead caused by maintaining and distributing per tunnel state information across the network. So first it sends the path message for LSP setup and in every router it creates a soft state. Once the path message is requested for the resources, it sends an RSVP reserve message hop by hop for label assignment, bandwidth assignment and the resource whatever attribute that is needed to assign, it will assign that. RSVP T network are built using a full mesh P2P RSVP T tunnel which install control plane and data plane state in every tunnel that originates, transit and terminates. Whereas in case of segment routing, segment routing has emerged as an advanced technique with a capability to overcome the challenges. The SR architecture defines the concept of segment which identifies an instruction to execute by the network device and the head end is responsible to encapsulate the incoming packet with an order list of segment. So the intermediate node only needs to process the packet according to the instruction specified in the segment list. As one of the important application of SRT involves the computation of implementation of segment list according to the intent of the network operator so as to implement the explicit path in the network to steer the traffic. Benefiting the source routing mechanism, intermediate per flow state are eliminated which allows SRT to achieve higher scalability. One of the major challenges with segment routing is the extra overhead caused by the segments in each packets, which however can effectively mitigate via different measures. In case of RSVP T, if a link fails, the protecting LSP will reroute traffic over the protected LSP, which tends to a suboptimal path. Upon failure, the core and the LSP must be resignaled, causing churn and the control plane change on every node running RSVP T. However, in case of segment routing, TI-LFA provide by segment routing is superior to one-to-one -to -one backup or facility backup link protection provided by RSVPT. In RSVPT, if the link fails, the protecting LSP will reroute the traffic to protected next hop, which often tends to a suboptimal path. This does not happen with TI-LFA as a backup path. For a link, always follows the optimal IGP best path assuming the failed link is out of the topology. In RSVP, ECMP is not supported natively. So in case of segment routing, the ability to perform MPLS ECMP routing is very limited with the traditional MPLS traffic engineering. Segment routing offers an ECMP routing capabilities in non-traffic engineering domains similar to current LDP. With the concept of global SID, node SID, or any cast say traffic engineering can be realized still ECMP routing between nodes and or the set of nodes. The capability to load balance across the label switch network between nodes or to a set of nodes afford greater flexibility as a macro traffic engineering path. So there is a complex steering in when we talk about RSVP T using policy based routing or auto route announce. But in case of segment routing, we do have traffic steering and the traffic steering can be done using a color attribute from BGP community. Also we can do a on-demand policy instantiation. For example, we have two LSPs. One is the data path which is yellow one. The other one is a green one which is low latency LSP. So using color attribute, we can steer the traffic based on the color yellow for example and then we will steer the traffic of the data in the yellow path and the steer the traffic in the green, which is a low latency, the voice or video traffic. RSVP has a complex inter-domain routing as well. But in case of segment routing, when we have a multi-domain, so SDN controller used for the computing, binding sets for the scales that have been used. So whenever we talk about segment routing, we have something called as SR policy. That SR policy will have a candidate path and the intent that is being done using many attributes such as IGP, TE, delay, affinity, disjoint paths. Segment routing was conceived as a technology for IPv6 network 
and as such natively support ipv6 derived from routing protocol v6 address family support which is consistent with ipv6 specification we have two flavors to deploy one is ipv6 control plane with segment routing mpls and the other one is srv6 with the interworking with ldps and rsvp segment routing need an sr ldp mapping in case of ldp islands when it connects to L ldp island and whenever there is a rsvp island is with there with segment routing we need a binding segment identifier for that this comes with ldp versus rsvp te versus segment routing so the overview it is a p2mp rsvp te is p2p and p2mp segment routing is p2mp please share your feedback and questions in the comment box i'll get back to you thank you for watching